Written by Manly Marianne. First Corinthians. A Commentary. Part 1. The Church, the Body of Christ. All scripture references are taken from the King James Bible. The cover depicts Paul's use the human body analogy for the body of Christ in chapter 12. Permission is granted to copy all contents of this book. Aspire, what I hope for you. I hope you sincerely know how that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That all your trust is in him and what he has done and none in yourself. I hope that you know that the perfected God gave us his perfect word in English in the King James Bible. Like Paul, I pray for you. I do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, Colossians 1 verses 9 to 13 KJV. I hope you spend time in prayer always, being pleasantly surprised by how lovingly and intimately God cares about us. I hope you will study to shew thyself approved unto God, not to men, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, daily and at the judgment seat of Christ, rightly dividing the word of truth, dividing truth from truth, all the Bible is truth, but it is not all our truth. Much of the Bible is learning about Israel's truth, Paul wrote to us, 2 Tim 2.15. I hope you will be gracious, organized, and orderly while still keeping the most important things in life done, not getting caught up with non-essentials. I hope you know the love of family and friends, that you find a lifetime partner, a spouse, that shares these same things. I hope you can be fit spiritually, in your mind, and physically so you are able to do all that you can in serving our head, the Lord Jesus Christ out of a grateful heart. And he is the head of the body, the church. Colossians 1 verse 18. Let him live through you. Let him flow through you like water through an unkinked hose. Remember, his grace is sufficient no matter what we are going through. Because then you will be caught up together with us to meet the Lord in the air. You will bow your knee with us at his judgment seat, adore him, and rendezvous with us in the heavenly places. I love you, but the Godhead, Colossians 2 verse 9, loves you more. Introduction 1 Corinthians is about how believers should think, live, and spend our time. It was written by Apostle Paul near the end of his three-year stay in Ephesus in Acts 19, Acts 20 verses 31 and 1 Cor. 16 colon 8, circa AD 56. It is a letter of reproof for not practicing the doctrine which Paul wrote down in Romans. Believers are dead to sin, alive unto God and walk in newness of life in Christ. We are sons of God and should labor with the Father in what he is doing. The Corinthians were impressed by human wisdom. Paul was grieved because the carnal Corinthians were living beneath their privileged position in Christ and not walking in a manner worthy of their calling. The Corinthians were guilty of conduct unbecoming of a saint. Ungodly thinking leads to ungodly living, resulting in ungodly labor. The theme is sanctification, Christian living, walk, conduct, God's wisdom, and the power of the cross. The word power occurs 21 times in the letter. The twofold purpose of the letter is to 1. Reprove the Corinthians believers for the sins they were permitting in the church, and 2. To answer questions about Christian life and doctrine. Paul corrects their faults by taking their eyes off of the wisdom of men and onto Christ and his appointed Apostle Paul. Corinth, one of the most important cities in Greece, is located on an isthmus 40 miles from Athens. It is on one of the major trade routes in the Roman Empire. Julius Caesar began the rebuilding of ancient Corinth in 44 BC after it had been demolished by the Romans in 146 BC. It was known for commerce, culture, 
and corruption. It was the headquarters for the idolatry of the goddess Aphrodite, the Roman Venus and Sidonia Ashtoreth. This mythology may be a corruption of the zodiac, Maseroth, Job 38 verse 32, 1 Cor. 8 colon 5. Notice that Psalm 19 verses 1 and 2 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, the constellations speak of God's redemptive plan, and night unto night showeth knowledge this psalm also talks about God's written word. Aphrodite may be a perversion of Virgo, the Virgin. In his book, The Witness in the Stars, E. W. Bullinger says that the Sphinx, half woman and half lion, is the key to understanding that the Zodiac began with the Virgin's birth of the Redeemer who ends up being the King, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. According to Wikipedia, there were over a thousand temple prostitutes in the Temple of Aphrodite. As we will learn in chapter 11, the Apostle Paul urged the female believers in Corinth not to bring reproach to the name of Christ by dressing or behaving immodestly. He encouraged them to follow the local custom of wearing a veil. The temple prostitutes apparently shaved their heads. Many ancient pictures, statues, and pottery in Corinth depict naked men and women, and gods and goddesses. This letter to the Corinthians is in response to a letter carried by Stephanus, Fortunatus, and Achaicus, 1617, concerning questions about marriage, food offered to idols, the resurrection, and more. But Paul was troubled by a report from those of the household of Chloe about division in the church, the lack of church discipline for incest by a member, and other issues not mentioned in their letter. Paul spends the first six chapters reproving the Corinthians and then answers their question in the last ten chapters. Paul tells the Corinthians what they are doing wrong, reproof, and then corrects them as he instructs them how they can be right. In the process, Paul defends his apostleship, reminding them of their goal to have something of value for their service at the judgment seat of Christ. He then comprehensively corrects errors concerning the resurrection of the saints. The letter is rich in sound doctrine, spiritual truths, and wisdom. Paul founded the church in Corinth on his second apostolic journey, Acts 18 verses 1 to 18, during his one and a half plus year stay there, Acts 18 verses 11 and 18. The Corinthian church briefly began in a synagogue, but then moved into the house next door that shared a wall with that synagogue. In a vision, Christ encouraged Paul to continue his ministry there, saying, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have many people in this city, Acts 18 verses 9 and 10. After that, he sailed to Syria on his way to Jerusalem. His friends and co-workers, Priscilla and Aquila, accompanied him as far as Ephesus. Paul returned there on his third apostolic journey. It is likely that during his three-year stay in Ephesus, Paul made a second visit to Corinth, 2 Cor. 2 colon 1, 12 14, 13 colon 1, to correct some of the problems there. Once back he wrote them a strong letter about fornication, 1 Cor. 5 colon 9, but this letter is not in our Bible because it was not inspired scripture. Paul sent Timothy and Erastus ahead to Corinth to help the leaders unify and purify the church and then the three that had brought the letter probably returned with this letter, Acts 19 verse 22, 1 Cor. 4 17, 16 10, 11. Timothy returned to Paul with the news that the church had received the letter but that things were still not right. Paul then dispatched Titus to Corinth to make sure that the church followed his apostolic orders, 2 Cor. 7 colon 13 dash 15. Finally, Titus returned to Paul, 2 Cor. 7 colon 6 dash 17, with good news that the offender, 1 Cor. 5 colon 1, 2, had been disciplined and that the church had humbly obeyed Paul's instructions. Paul then writes 2 Corinthians saying that he was comforted by the return of Titus and full of joy because of the report he gave him. Titus took this letter back to Corinth and assisted them in the collection for the poor saints in Jerusalem. Paul made one last visit to Corinth and spent the winter with them, Acts 20 verses 1 to 4. The Corinthians were guilty of conduct unbecoming of a saint. 
1 Corinthians is such a great letter because it deals with the believer's conduct, how we should live a life pleasing to God. The key verse is 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, unity, not division. This letter works effectually in the believer to make us willing, like Paul, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ even if we are treated like a spectacle, the filth of this world, and the off-scouring of all things. Our ministry is not about us, but the power of Christ crucified and risen again. Our goal is to save the lost and share the mystery. The 13 letters of Paul follow the order given in 2 Tim. 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Romans equals doctrine. 1 and 2 Corinthians equals reproof. Galatians equals correction. Ephesians equals doctrine. Philippians equals reproof. Colossians equals correction. 1 and 2 Thessalonians equals doctrine, instruction in righteousness. 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon equals doctrine, instruction in righteousness. The pre-prison letters were written during Acts, the transition period. Romans, foundational doctrine, 1 and 2 Corinthian, reproof for not living according to the doctrine in Romans, and Galatians, correction for leaving grace and living under the law. Paul was put on house arrest in the last chapter of Acts, Acts 28. These epistles were written before Paul received the full revelation of the mystery. They focus on foundational doctrines and are best understood when read together. The order of Paul's Acts epistles including when and where they were written. Galatians Acts 15 verse 35 Antioch 1 Thess Acts 18 verse 5 Corinth 2 Thess Acts 18 verse 11 Corinth 1 Cor Acts 19 verse 10 Ephesus 2 Cor Romans Acts 20 verse 1 Acts 20 verse 3 Macedonia Corinth Asterisk please notice that the order of the books begins at the bottom with Romans 13 letters written by Apostle Paul, order, structure, and purpose, Philemon a letter of appeal to a friend, demonstration, intercession, 1 and 2 Timothy and Titus letters to individual church leaders, utilization, exhorts, 1 and 2 Thessalonians letters to a questioning church, expectation, encourages, Colossians a letter to a wavering church, culmination, admonishes, Philippians a letter to a giving church, subordination, servanthood, Ephesians a letter to a stable church, exaltation, identification, Galatians a letter to a legalistic church, liberation, correction, 1 and 2 Corinthians letters to a carnal church, sanctification, reproof, Romans a letter to stabilize a church far away, Justification, explained, the above is written with help of Drive W. Edward Bedor of Berean Bible Institute. Each of Paul's letters builds on the other and is designed to edify our inner man. So that we go from being spiritual babies to mature useful sons of God. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 3 verse 17. Reproof of sins, 1 to 6, I, Introduction. Sanctification. The believer standing in grace, 1 colon 1 dash 9. A. Not living up to their standing in Christ, 1 10 to 4 21, 1. Divisions in the body of Christ due to human wisdom, 1 colon 10 dash 17, 2. Human wisdom contrasted with God's wisdom, 1 colon 18 dash 25, 3. Corinthians not of the wise, Christ is our wisdom, 1 colon 26-31, 4. The mystery, God's hidden wisdom and spiritual truth, 2, 5. Carnal and worldly versus spiritual growth and maturity, 3 colon 1-8, 6. Rewards for being laborers together with God, 3 colon 9-3 colon 23, 7. Stewards of the mysteries of God, apostolic example, 4, 2. Wrong living, immorality rebuked, 5, 3. Disputes in the courts.
Believers are the temple of the Holy Ghost. 6. Replying to questions. 7 to 16. 4. Concerning marriage. 7. V. The weaker brother, idols, and limitation of Christian liberty. 8. 6. Paul defends his apostleship and grace giving. 9. 7. Israel as an example of what not to do. Be separated unto God. 10. 8. Christian order and the Lord's Supper. 11. 9. Concerning the operation and abuse of spiritual gifts. 12 to 14. A. The purpose of gifts in this early church. 12. B. Using sign gifts in love and their impending cessation. 13. See regulation of spiritual gifts in the local assembly. 14. X. Concerning the hope of resurrection. 15. A. Proof of the resurrection. 15 colon 1 34. B. Process of the resurrection. 15 colon 35 49. C. Pending victory over death as motivation for loyal service. 15 colon 50 58. 11. Concerning the collection for the saints and farewell. 16 colon 1 24. First Corinthians chapters in one review sentence. 1. They are saints because the cross of Christ is the power of God. 2. Not man's wisdom, but the wisdom of God in a mystery. 3. Laborers together with God. Receive rewards. 4. Spanking the saints for not following Paul who said, Follow me and my ways which be in Christ. 5. Paul said judge those in the church and remove those in open sin. 11. 6. Why do you go to court about church matters before unbelievers who are like you were? 7. Stay where you are when saved. You may marry who you will in the Lord. Singles are more free to serve God. 8. Do not eat meat offered to idols if it offends the weaker brother whom Christ died for. 9. Like Paul, limit your rights for the sake of another. 10. Learn from Israel's mistakes. Flee idolatry. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. 11. Christian. Order and the Lord's table. 12. Spiritual. Gifts are to edify the body of Christ. 13. Spiritual gifts are temporary and must be used in love. 14. Spiritual gifts are assigned to the unbelieving Jews. 15. The pre tribulation rapture is certain. It was a mystery. 16. Start collecting. Money for the poor saints in Jerusalem. Be spiritually mature. God divides the Bible between prophecy and mystery. It is impossible to understand the Bible without understanding the divisions God makes in the Bible. God divides out the information between Christ's two appearings from the rest of the Bible. His appearing to Paul on the road to Damascus, the beginning of the church, the body of Christ, and his appearing in the air at the rapture. It is important to recognize Paul's distinctive apostleship and the message he received from Christ in heaven, the mystery. The previously hidden knowledge that God plans to reclaim the heavenly places with the body of Christ. God still has a plan for Israel, prophecy, which he will resume after the promised rapture, the fullness of the Gentiles. The believing nation of Israel will live on the earth. Christ is the Redeemer for both the body of Christ and Israel. Yes, it is true that we should study the entire Bible, but we should study it by rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. We have to divide our truth to the body of Christ from the rest of the Bible. Paul said, Consider what I say. And the Lord give the understanding in all things, 2 Tim, 2 colon 7. Therefore, we are to study what Paul said first and the rest of the Bible from a Pauline vantage point. In the future, Israel will need to believe that Jesus of Nazareth was their Messiah. The majority of Israel will not believe this during the tribulation, but the remnant will.
Since the apostate nation does not believe that their Redeemer has come, they will be offering animal sacrifices. However, the remnant will know that Christ's blood already redeemed them and will not take part in that. Rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 means dividing the truth that belongs to the body of Christ from the rest of the Bible. The ascended glorified Lord Jesus Christ began a new ministry from heaven with Apostle Paul. New Apostle, Steward of the Mysteries, New Gospel, Christ's Death, Burial, and Resurrection for Our Sins, New Dispensation, The Mystery, Not Prophecy, New Agency, The Body of Christ, New Audience, All People, New Operating System, Grace, Not Law. Grace and peace are some things God offers in this dispensation of the grace of God. F. 3 colon 2. We live in an age of amnesty in which God is not imputing sin. 2 Cor. 5 19. But freely offers salvation to anyone who believes in Christ. It is necessary to review Acts 18 verses 1 to 18 before proceeding further. Acts 18 verse 1 After these things Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. After his speech on Mars Hill Paul proceeded to Corinth while waiting for his friends, too, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius, reign AD 41 to 54, had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. 3. And because he was of the same craft, he abode, lived, with them, and wrought, worked, for by their occupation they were tent makers. 4. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks, the Greek proselytes that believed the Jews' religion. 5. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ, their Messiah. 6. And when they opposed themselves, refused to believe, and blasphemed, spoke against Christ, he shook his raiment, and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads, I am clean, from henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. This was the second strike for the Jews see 1346, 28 colon 28. 7. And he departed thence, and entered into a certain man's house, named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. Shared a wall. 8. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed, and were baptized. Many of the Jews believed Paul when their leader believed. 1 Cor. 114, 9 Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace, ten for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have many people in this city. In his foreknowledge, God knew many would believe. 11 And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Paul obeyed and stayed one and a half plus years, CV 18. 12. And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, Gallio was deputy AD 50 to 52, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul, and brought him to the judgment seat. 13. Saying, This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. 14. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason with that I should bear with you. 15. But if it be a question of words and names, and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. 16. And he drave them from the judgment seat. 17. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, one core, one colon one, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of those things. He was not impressed. 18 And Paul after this tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Sencria, for he had a vow. Paul was still doing some Jewish things to win the Jews to Christ. Chapter 1 Not Living Up to Their Standing in Christ 1 colon 1 dash 9 Introduction The Believer's Standing in Grace 1 colon 10 dash 17 Not Thinking Like God Divisions in the Body Due to Human Wisdom 
1 colon 18 25 human wisdom contrasted with God's wisdom. 1 colon 26 31 Corinthian believers not of the wise, Christ is our wisdom. Paul tells the Corinthians where they are wrong and then instructs them how to be right. The Corinthians were guilty of conduct unbecoming of a saint. They were sanctified, set apart, and positioned in Christ, but not living as saints. Asterisk notice that in each of the first 10 verses Paul mentions Christ, underlined. This is one of the ways Paul gets them to stop glorying in men and glory in Christ. The word power is used 21 times in this letter. The cross has the power to save. Paul did not rely on himself, but on Christ's powerful spirit within him to share Christ's accomplishment at Calvary with the Corinthians, so that their faith would rest on Christ's work, not the wisdom of men. Faith in Christ's cross work has the power to save a sinner and translate him out of Adam into Christ, Colossians 1 verse 13. The key to learning from Paul's epistles is to watch what our pattern does, because Paul allowed the power of Christ to work and live through him. We follow Paul to follow Christ, 11 colon 1. Paul also clearly states that Christ did not send him to water baptize, he had only done so with a few, but to preach, 117. Paul describes our spiritual baptism into Christ in 1213. Paul reminded them that they were saints. His entire focus was Christ crucified. The cross, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest, most incredible event in history. God left heaven and stepped into a human body. The judge died for the accused. He took the pain and shame we deserved by substituting himself in our place. Thank you, Lord. God alone accomplished our salvation, therefore no one can ever boast. We are justified by faith and are complete having his imputed righteousness, his spirit, 2 Cor. 5.21 1 colon 1 The former chief ruler of the synagogue was now a brother and probably took the dictation of this letter from Paul who took it from Christ. He was the second. Such leader to be saved by Paul in Corinth. Paul founded the church at Corinth in Acts 18 verses 1 to 18. Paul was called and commissioned to be Christ's apostle as recorded in Acts 9 verses 1 to 16, 22 colon 7 dash 10, 26 colon 14 dash 18. 1 colon 2 Paul tactfully reminds the Corinthians that they are sanctified, set apart, in Christ Jesus, they are in him, 2 Cor. 521, the theirs is the believing remnant, Peter's group, of Israel, Gal. 616, Peter's group was already sanctified in the previous dispensation by faith and the body of Christ will have an inheritance among them, an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me, Acts 26 verse 18. He is not only our Lord, he is their Lord also. There were followers of Peter, Cephas, in the assembly at Corinth, 1 12. 1 colon 3, for God offers grace and peace to those who believe what he says his son has done for us. We are living in the dispensation of grace, F. 3 colon 2, when the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20 verse 24, is in effect. Because of Christ, God graciously gave them spiritual gifts so that the Jews in the synagogue next door would be saved. 1 colon 5, 6 they were rich in the gift of tongues, speaking other languages, and supernatural knowledge, 13 colon 8, of what Christ had revealed to Paul before the revelation given to him was complete. These gifts were evidence of their salvation, and that God was working in and through them. 1 colon 7 dash 9 the Corinthian church was wonderfully blessed with more sign gifts than any of the other of the churches founded by Paul. The Greek word for gift is charisma. The coming of our Lord Jesus himself for his body to catch us up is the rapture. Blameless is to have Christ's imputed perfect righteousness in the day of the coming of the Lord. 1 colon 10 dash 12 When we all say what God says to us through Paul then we speak the same thing. Paul uses the word same three times to emphasize the goal of saying the same thing, thinking the same, and judging the same.
Now that Paul has reminded them of who they are in Christ, he launches into a discussion of their sins, dealing first with the matter of division in the church. He clearly states the correct goal, be perfectly joined together making the decisions Christ would make. The unity in F. For colon 1-6, the body of Christ is a team. Paul said he had heard from Chloe that they were contending with one another and causing division. Now he is saying to them that he heard that they are following individual personalities. They are not to follow men, nor Christ's earthly ministry given in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but Christ's heavenly ministry through Paul. 1 colon 14 17 Crispus was the first ruler of the synagogue to be converted in Acts 18 verse 8, and the rest of the Jews should have followed. Gaius was probably Paul's host on his visit to Corinth in Acts 20 verse 3 when he wrote Romans. Paul was not keeping track of who he baptized. Water baptism makes the cross of none effect. Paul also clearly states that Christ did not send him to water baptize, he only did so with a few, but to preach. Paul describes our spiritual baptism into Christ in 12.13. 118 Paul says the power of God three times in 1 Corinthians 118, 124, 2 5. Paul was not ashamed to preach the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Rom 116, because it works. Faith in what Christ has done has the power to translate the believer out of Adam and bondage to sin and Satan and eternal death and into Christ, and freedom from the penalty and power of sin and eternal life, Colossians 1 verse 13. Paul preached Christ crucified wherever he went, and so should we. 1 colon 19 21 Paul quotes ISA. 29 colon 14, 15 and says that God will destroy man's wisdom. God's magnanimous act of the cross dwarfs everything else. What is actually foolish? Paul quotes ISA 1912-33-18. Men by their wisdom could not find God, but God can reach them with the preaching of the truth of his word, Rom 116, 1017, and 2 Thess 214. People who think they know everything will not realize their need for a savior. 122 23 God spoke to Jews with signs Psalm 74 verse 9, and the Greeks had their philosophers like Plato. God made a covenant of sight with Israel Exodus 34 verse 10. Because of the law contract, God would chastise Israel, Leviticus. 26, with signs like no rain, famine, enemies, etc. But in this dispensation of grace, we walk by faith in his word, to Cor. 5 colon 7, God does not chastise us with weather and enemies, but we have an enemy, one thess. 3 colon 5, and live in a present evil world, gal. 1 colon 4, the Jews stumbled at the cross, John 1 verse 11, Rom. 9 32, 33, 1 Peter 2 verse 8. Not many believed when Paul preached in Athens, but mocked him, Acts 17 verse 32. 124 Christ is the power and wisdom of God. The Father wagered everything on His Son's ability to go through with His plan of redemption. He saved two groups of believers by one cross. His plan to save all mankind was not revealed until it was revealed to us by Paul, 1 Cor. 2 colon 6 8, 1 Tim. 2 colon 6. Today, Christ is saving both Gentiles and Jews into the body of Christ, Gal. 328, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. 1 colon 25 28 The cross demonstrates God's wisdom in solving the sin problem and he uses preaching to save souls. God saves ordinary people who believe, which confuses the wise of the world. The despised are Paul and his co-workers. 130, 31 Christ is everything to us, wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so let us glory in him, Ja. 9.24. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. 2 Cor. 10.17, 1 
1 colon 1 Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes our brother, the former chief ruler of the synagogue was now a brother and probably took the dictation of this letter from Paul who took it from Christ. He was the second such leader to be saved by Paul in Corinth. Paul founded the church at Corinth in Acts 18 verses 1 to 18 and was commissioned to be Christ's apostle as recorded in Acts 9 verses 1 to 16, 22 colon 7 dash 10, 26 colon 14 18. Two unto the church of God, God's church, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon. The name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours, Paul tactfully reminds the Corinthians that they are sanctified, set apart, in Christ Jesus, they are in him, 2 Cor. 521, the theirs is the believing remnant, Peter's group, of Israel, Gal. 616, Peter's group was already sanctified in the previous dispensation by faith and the body of Christ will have an inheritance among them. An inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me, Acts 26 verse 18. He is not only our Lord, he is their Lord also. There were followers of Peter, Cephas, in the assembly at Corinth, 1 12. Dot. Three grace be unto you, and peace, from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Today God offers grace and peace to those who believe what he says his Son has done for us. We are living in the dispensation of grace, F. 3 colon 2, when the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20 verse 24, is in effect. For I thank my God always on your behalf, for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Paul thanks God on their behalf that God graciously gave them spiritual gifts so that the Jews in the synagogue next door would be saved. 5. That in everything ye are enriched by him, in all utterance, and in all knowledge, they were rich in the gift of tongues, speaking other languages, and supernatural knowledge, 13,8, of what Christ had revealed to Paul before the revelation given to him was complete. 6. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, these gifts were evidence of their salvation and that God was working in and through them. 7. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Cor. 5 colon 5, 2 Cor. 1 14, Philosophy. 1 colon 6, 1 10, 2 16, Colossians 1 verses 22 and 23, 1 Thess. 5 23, the Corinthian church was wonderfully blessed with more sign gifts than any other of the churches Paul had founded. The Greek for gifts is charisma. The coming of our Lord Jesus himself for his body to catch us up is the rapture. 8. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, philosophy. 1 colon 6. That ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blameless is to have Christ's imputed perfect righteousness in the day of the coming of the Lord v. 7. See those references. Dot. 9. God is faithful, by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. We are in the fellowship of the mystery, f. 3, 9. Dot. 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, when we all say what God says to us through Paul then we speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, thinking like Christ 2.16 and making decisions like he would, and in the same judgment. Paul uses the word same three times to emphasize the goal of saying the same thing, thinking the same, and judging the same. Paul has reminded them of who they are in Christ, then he launches into a discussion of their sins, dealing first with the matter of division in the church. He clearly states the correct goal, to be perfectly joined together making the decisions Christ would make. The unity in F. For colon 1-6, the body of Christ is a team. 11 For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Paul said he had heard from Chloe that they were contending with one another and causing division. Now he is saying to them that he heard that they are following individual personalities. 
They are not to follow men, nor Christ's earthly ministry given in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but Christ's heavenly ministry through Paul. They needed to take their eyes off each other and onto Christ. 12. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I have Apollos, and I have Cephas, and I have Christ. Paul did not want them to follow individuals, but Christ's heavenly ministry through Paul. Not Christ's earthly ministry given in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 13. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? 14. I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. Crispus was the first ruler of the synagogue. To be converted in Acts 18 verse 8, the rest of the Jews should have followed. Gaius was probably Paul's host on his visit to Corinth in Acts 20 verse 3 when he wrote Romans. 15 Lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. They would have accused Paul next. 16 And I baptized also the household of Stephanas, besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. Paul was not keeping track of who he baptized. 17 For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Water baptism makes the cross of none effect. Paul also clearly states that Christ did not send him to water baptize, he only did so with a few, but to preach. Paul describes our spiritual baptism into Christ in 12.13. 18 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Paul says the power of God three times in 1 Corinthians 1 18, 1 24, 2 5. Paul was not ashamed to preach the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Rom. 1 16, Because it works. Faith in what Christ has done has the power to translate the believer out of Adam and bondage to sin and Satan and eternal death and into Christ and freedom from the penalty and power of sin and eternal life. Colossians 1 verse 13. Paul preached Christ crucified wherever he went and so should we. 19 For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Paul quotes ISA. 29 colon 14, 15 and says that God will destroy man's wisdom. 20 Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? God's magnanimous act of the cross dwarfs everything else. 21 For after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. What is actually foolish? Paul quotes ISA 19.12.33.18 Men with their wisdom could not find God, but God can reach them by the preaching of the truth of his word. Rom 1.16, 10.17, and 2 Thess 2.14 People who think they know everything will not realize their need for a savior. 22 For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. God spoke to Jews with signs Psalm 74 verse 9, and the Greeks had their philosophers like Plato. 
God made a covenant of sight with Israel Exodus 34 verse 10. Because of the law contract, God would chastise Israel, Leviticus. 26, with signs like no rain, famine, enemies, etc. But in this dispensation of grace, we walk by faith in his word, 2 Cor. 5 colon 7, God does not chastise us with weather and enemies, but we have an enemy, one thus. 2.18, and live in a present evil world, Gal. 1 colon 4, dot, 23, but we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, the Jews stumbled at the cross, John 1 verse 11, Rom. 9 32, 33, 1 Peter 2 verse 8. Not many believed when Paul preached in Athens, but mocked him, Acts 17 verse 32, dot. 24, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Christ is the power and wisdom of God. The Father wagered everything on His Son's ability to go through with His plan of redemption. He saved two groups of believers by one cross. His plan to save all mankind was not revealed until it was revealed to us by Paul, 1 Cor. 2 colon 6 8, 1 Tim. 2 colon 6, today, Christ is saving both Gentiles and Jews into the body of Christ, Gal. 328. 25. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. 26. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things, the preaching of the cross by believers, of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. The cross demonstrates God's wisdom in solving the sin problem. God saves ordinary people who believe, which confuses the wise of the world. 28 And base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, the despised are Paul and his followers by them God brings to nothing the things done by Satan inspired men or Satan who thought he was wise and mighty, Ezek. 28 colon 3 Dot, 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence. 30 but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. 31 that, according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Paul wants them to glory in Christ, not men. Christ is everything to us, so let us glory in him, Ja. 9.24, 2 Cor. 10.17, Chapter 2 The Mystery, God's Hidden Wisdom and Spiritual Truth. 2.1-16, God's Spirit, Mind, Wisdom, and Power Must Work Through Us. Paul continues to discuss the power of the gospel and God's wisdom, which he began in 1.17. The Corinthians were putting too much emphasis on the sign gifts they had been given. They were focusing too much on speaking in tongues and not enough on prophesy, preaching the revelation of the mystery of God. They needed to focus on Christ crucified and risen again. They did not understand the purpose of the gifts, to witness to the Jews next door, 122, nor their temporary nature, 13,8-10. In other words, the Corinthians were behaving like most of the charismatic Christians today. Because of their carnality and ignorance of their sanctification process, they were not useful to God. Paul had to restore their focus, thinking, and the order in the church. By this time, Paul had written only a few letters by the Spirit of God, first to the Galatians and then the two letters to the Thessalonians. There may have been some Christians at Corinth who admired the philosophies of men, perhaps the eloquent oratory skills of Apollos had encouraged this. They thought the church would be better off to use man's wisdom and philosophy to win converts rather than the simple message of the cross. Many pastors and teachers today will rely on man's wisdom or cute stories instead of preaching the word of God given to us through Paul and what Christ has done for us. We must guard against this. Paul compares and contrasts three sets of twos, 
two wisdoms, two spirits, and two types of people. God's wisdom is superior to man's, plain preaching is more powerful than persuasive philosophical oratory. He compares man's spirit with God's spirit, and the natural man is contrasted with the spiritual man. In the process Paul reveals how God defeated Satan, his eternal purpose for the body of Christ, and how he has equipped us with the mind of Christ. Our goal is to get a handle on this letter. Were the Corinthians saved? Yes. So, if they were saved, what is their main problem? They did not understand their sanctification process. Sanctification refers to both our position in Christ and to our practice, conduct. Their position was secure, but their practice was poor. They were positioned in Christ but did not understand their practical walk, how to think, live, and serve God now that they have Christ in them. They were carnal, spiritually useless to God. Just like fleshly unbelievers, they were dead to the things of God. Rom 8.13 Christians should think like the Christians they are, not like the lost that they are not. We are not who we were. God's life is in us. We have his identity now, his divine nature in us, so we should think like him. The Corinthians were seeking to be popular, caring about the wisdom of men and the fashion of this world. They were living contrary to who they were in Christ Jesus. They did not understand Romans 6 to 8. This is a big problem for many Christians today. They are saved, but ignorant of what God is doing and how to live a life of value to God. With this deficiency in mind, let us review the four main pillars in Romans 1 to 5 Justification All the world is guilty, salvation is by faith in Christ and what he has done. Rom 3 21 28, 1 Cor 15 3, 4. We receive his imputed righteousness. Rom 4. We are translated out of Adam's family into Christ. 6 to 8 Sanctification, identification with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Rom 6 3, 4, 11, so we can live unto God and serve Him. We died with Christ. We are dead to sin, but alive unto God. We believe God's word as we know, reckon, and yield to the truth of what God says about us, that, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. 618. The power of sin has been broken, and we can walk in newness of life, his life. Now that we are Christians, we are not to live in the flesh like we did before we were saved, and to think like a non-Christian. But after salvation, sin still lives in our flesh, so we cannot do good and serve God on our own. Rom 718 Asterisk This is very useful information to know. So, then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8 verse 8 We are to mortify the deeds of the flesh. How do we do that? We just say no to the flesh and yes to God. We know, reckon and yield to what God says, that we are dead to sin, Rom. 6 1, a dead man cannot sin. We chose to labor as his sons in what he is doing, that is how we have joy. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit and to let his word dwell in us richly, Rom. 8 1, 4, Colossians 3 verse 16. God sees us as adult sons who are able to labor with him. But we cannot know what God is doing unless we rightly divide the word of truth. We walk by faith in what God says about us and to us in his word and we do not follow rules or regulations. Rules and legalism empower sin and the flesh. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6 verse 14 we have God's life in us now to help us function as God intends us to. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Rom. 8 2 works in us. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8 verse 14. Adult sons serve their fathers out of love, not because they have to, but because they want to. We cannot serve God in our flesh, but we can serve God if Christ serves him through us. This is the power of God, 
Christ strengthen us, 2 Cor. 12 colon 5 dash 9, it is not I, but Christ liveth in me, Gal. 2 20, 9 to 11, what has happened to the promises God gave to Israel? These chapters help us to rightly divide God's word. Read Rom 11, 11, 12, 15, 25, 26. Israel stumbled at the cross and then fell when they committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. They rejected the last offer of the king and his kingdom by the Holy Ghost filled Stephen when they stoned him to death, Acts 7. So, God set the nation of Israel aside temporarily. God was ready to pour out his wrath on Israel and the world, but instead he saved Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus and made him the Apostle of the Gentiles, Rom 11.13 Jesus appointed him to help him build the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace, the mystery that he inserted while he postponed prophecy. No creature was as surprised as Satan when Christ returned after a year in heaven and saved his worst enemy on the road to Damascus. What? Satan said, that is not what the scriptures say. That is unprophesied. That was not what was supposed to happen next. Where is God's wrath on his people? God defeated Satan by keeping a secret, the formation of the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace. A quote from my book Romans, a concise commentary, page 127, I also highly recommend reading my basic book for understanding the Bible, God's Secret. Both are available on Amazon. Gentiles are now living during the nation of Israel's judicial blindness and have an opportunity to be saved apart from going through Israel. We are not Israel. God is not finished with Israel. This opportunity ends at the fullness of the Gentiles, the rapture. After that event, God will resume his prophetic program to save believers in Israel. Today, Jews can be saved by believing the same thing that Gentiles need to believe, the gospel Paul preached. 12 to 16 practical application of the doctrine or body of knowledge learned in chapters Rom. 1 to 11, we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice for Christ to live through and to be transformed by the renewing of our minds by his word. In Romans 1 to 5, our salvation was settled. Chapter 6 to 8 of Romans is not about salvation, but sanctification, our walk, living, and conduct, which are all the same thing. We are led by the Spirit when we allow the living word to use his living word, Heb. For 12, to transform our minds, our thinking, by reprogramming it to be like his mind. We put God's truth in, and it teaches us to let truth come out. Rom 6 to 8 is about how we live unto God, not salvation. The condemnation in Rom 8 colon 1 is self-condemnation for not living a life that God approves of, a life pleasing to him, because we are not operating in the spirit, but in our flesh. Look at Romans 8 verse 13, we die when we are unproductive and useless to God, when we do not know his will and purpose and his word is not working effectually in us, 1 Thess. 2.13. We should believe what God says about us in his word. He calls us saints. What does the Christian walk look like practically? This is how I often get started in morning. First, I pray and then read the Bible with some coffee. Then take a walk with Grace, my saved daughter with Down syndrome, who loves to sing to God. While we walk, we sing some songs that exalt the Lord. Grace loves O Come All Ye Faithful, which talks about adoring Him. Then we sing, For you alone are worthy, and we give you all the glory. We sing other hymns too like Jesus paid it all. All these songs give us the right perspective. Christ is exalted and we are not. We need Him. He is our joy, our everything. Then I read some more Bible later. Being retired, I can read as much as I want. I love to know what God says to us. His word, rightly divided, is so interesting that I just can't get enough. I do listen to excellent grace pastors and teachers both men and women and have learned many things from them. But we must always remember that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God. 2 Tim 2.15 
This means that we need to do our own personal Bible study daily. What we learn from others is like the tip of the iceberg, while what we study on our own really builds our inner man. This is all that we can take with us when we die. It will have eternal rewards and can help teach us godliness, godlikeness. Paul had to die to himself daily, 1531. We are not who we used to be. Our old sin nature was crucified with Christ, and we were given his divine nature, the spirit of Christ living in us. Therefore, we should walk in the newness of life. Rom 6, 4. His life is in us. We are not the same. We are being transformed. At that time, who else besides the members of the body of Christ read Paul's letters? Peter and his group. Imagine someone telling Peter, Paul mentioned you in his letter. Then Peter reads, I withstood him to his face, because he was to be blamed, Gal. 2.11 It is like saying someone mentioned you in a comment on Facebook. So, when Paul says, all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, he is addressing the body of Christ outside Corinth and Peter's group, the Israel of God, Gal. 6.16 Peter later endorsed Paul, 2 Peter 3 verses 15 and 16. Reproof means blame expressed to the face, an expression of blame or disapproval, wrongs, disgrace, convince of a fault. Paul reproved Peter and the Corinthians. 2 colon 1 Paul declared the testimony of God, his brilliant plan for Christ to be born of a virgin by the Holy Ghost so he did not inherit Adam's sin nature. Then Christ lived a perfect life so that he could be the perfect unblemished sacrificial lamb of God. He took the sin of the world and the full wrath of God on himself and triumphed over Satan with both hands and feet nailed to the cross. He paid for all sins with his blood and overcame death by rising again the third day in his glorified body as prophesied. Therefore, all who believe will have Christ's righteousness placed to their account, to Cor. 521. The Father can remain just and justify them that believe. Those with Christ's righteousness are allowed into his presence. Please notice that salvation is 100% what God has done and 0% man. If anyone tries to add what they have done to Christ's work, they insult God and will not be accepted in the beloved. F. 1 colon 6. They will have canceled out their salvation with their work. Rom. 4 colon 5, Rom. 11 colon 6, Salvation is a gift that must be believed in. Order to be received. Believing is something we can do without doing a work. Faith is not a work, it is agreeing with God's facts. What Christ did nearly 2,000 years ago is a well-tested and well-documented fact. Not until Paul do we find out that Christ died for our sins, the Gentiles and the dispensation of grace, apart from going through Israel. Forgiveness is only by faith in what the Son of God did. Gentiles in Israel's prophetic program will need to bless and serve Israel and believe that Jesus is the King of the Jews. Jesus Christ is the Redeemer for the Mystery Program Group and the Prophecy Program Group. Christ accomplished the Father's plan of redemption on Calvary, his death, burial, and resurrection on the third day according to the scriptures for all mankind's sins. God alone redeemed mankind. 2.2-4 Paul's focus was Christ and what he had done and did not waste any time talking about anything else. Paul arrived in Corinth after a seeming defeat in Athens where he made only a few converts. He humbly shared all that Christ had revealed to him. He probably told them the testimony of his salvation. His fear was that they would not believe, and Paul trembled at the thought of them not going to heaven. He took his commission very seriously and zealously did his very best for Christ. Christ entrusted him with the mystery and to be the master builder of this new body of believers destined for heaven, 3.10. Paul allowed the power of Christ to work, speak, and live through him. He used words that were easy to understand. 2 colon 5 I have circled and colored this phrase power of God every time God uses it in my Bible. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5 
Paul was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Rom. 116. Paul exalted Jesus. Paul knew the gospel of Christ worked. Faith in Christ's crosswork has the power to save a sinner and translate him out of Adam into Christ. Colossians 1 verse 13. God's plan was to save two groups of believers. F. 1 colon 9 colon 10. 2 colon 6 dash 8. Paul speaks to the spiritually mature that of God's wisdom and will understand. In contrast, the wise men of the world whose father is Satan will come to nothing. F. 2 colon 1 dash 3. 6 12. The hidden wisdom of God was a mystery or secret that was not mentioned in the Bible until Christ revealed it to Paul. God hid the fact of his twofold eternal purpose to reclaim both heaven, using the body of Christ, and earth, using the nation of Israel, from Satan and his cohorts. Most Christians are ignorant of this truth which is outlined in Ephesians chapters 2 and 3. Because of their ignorance of Paul's distinct apostleship to the Gentiles, many pastors are unknowingly trying to bring in the kingdom instead of preparing the believers to reign with Christ in heaven. God solved the sin problem by the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ redeemed both the believers in heaven, mystery, and on earth, prophecy. 2 colon 12 dash 15 God freely gives us his spirit so we can be spiritual men and understand his plan of salvation and that we will live in heaven by faith. God's truth passes from the mind of God to his people through his word. God's spiritual words are to be compared in one place with related words found in another place to gain the most profit out of them, cross-referenced. Spiritual truths are not by human wisdom but revealed to the Bible believer by the Holy Ghost. John 14 verses 16 and 26. The Bible is a closed book to anyone who is not saved. His spirit is needed to understand it. Job 32 verse 8. Because it is spiritually discerned. A saved person can judge or examine what God says and all things. God alone judges the believer and no one judges God. 216 Adam and Eden was created in God's image and thought like him. So, when he named the animals, that is exactly what God would have named them. How do we have the mind of Christ? By reading and studying his word. No one can tell God what to do. God wants us to think like him and is conforming us to Christ. Rom. 829, 12 colon 1, 2, Philosophy. 2 colon 5, 2 colon 1 and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Christ accomplished the Father's plan of redemption on Calvary, his death, burial, and resurrection on the third day according to the scriptures for all mankind's sins. God alone redeemed mankind. Two for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ, and him crucified. Paul's focus was Christ and what he had done and did not waste any time talking about anything else. 3 And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. Paul arrived in Corinth after a seeming defeat in Athens where he made only a few converts. He humbly shared all that Christ had revealed to him. He probably told them the testimony of his salvation. His fear was that they would not believe, and Paul trembled at the thought of them not going to heaven. He took his commission very seriously and zealously did his very best for Christ. Christ entrusted him with the mystery and to be the master builder of this new body of believers destined for heaven. 310. For in my speech and my preaching was not with enticing, persuasive words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, Paul allowed the power of Christ to work, speak, and live through him. He used words that were easy to understand. 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I have circled and colored this phrase power of God every time God uses it in my Bible. 1. Thess. 1 colon 5. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Rom. 1.16. Paul exalted Jesus.
Paul knew the gospel of Christ worked. Faith in Christ's cross work has the power to save a sinner and translate him out of Adam into Christ. Colossians 1 verse 13. God's plan was to save two groups, F. 1 colon 9, 10. 6 Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Paul speaks to the spiritually mature that of God's wisdom and will understand. In contrast, the wise men of the world whose father is Satan will come to nothing. F. 2 colon 1 dash 3, 6 12. Dot. 7 But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. The hidden wisdom of God was a mystery or secret that was not mentioned in the Bible until Christ revealed it to Paul. God hid the fact of his twofold eternal purpose to reclaim both heaven, using the body of Christ, and earth, using the nation of Israel, from Satan and his cohorts. Most Christians are ignorant of this truth which is outlined in Ephesians chapters 2 and 3. Because of their ignorance of Paul's distinct apostleship to the Gentiles, many pastors are unknowingly trying to bring in the kingdom instead of preparing the believers to reign with Christ in heaven. God solved the sin problem by the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ redeemed both the believers in heaven, mystery, and on earth, prophecy. Dot. 8 Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The princes of the world were empowered by Satan and the principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, F. 612 To crucify Christ. Satan did not know about the hidden wisdom of God since it was not made known in Scripture until Paul, F. 3 colon 1 dash 9, the crucifixion sealed Satan's doom, Christ took back heaven and earth, Colonel 120, 215. Paul speaks the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of this world, 2 colon 6, cf. 2 colon 1 dash 3, nor anything that can be learned from the princes of this world, men that are highly esteemed because of their worldly wisdom like scientists and philosophers, f. 6 12, who come to nothing. Paul is speaking the wisdom that God kept hidden, a mystery or secret that was not mentioned in the Bible until Christ revealed it to Paul. 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. God's wonderful plan to redeem the body of Christ had no entered into man's heart. Whenever Paul says it is written, he quotes Old Testament. Notice that Isaiah says, Waiteth for him, ISA. 64 colon 4, while Paul by the Holy Spirit says, Love him. The believing remnant of Israel, Peter's group, is still waiting to be born again at Christ's second coming when they will be resurrected and receive their glorified bodies. We will receive our glorified bodies at the rapture. We have been quickened with him, F. 2 colon 1, God has a plan for us to live with Christ in us now and in eternity. In the dispensation of grace, God is forming the body of Christ being prepared to live in the heavenly places. We love him, believe him, trust what God says in his word that Christ has done for us. We are grateful to him that we are saved from the penalty and bondage, power, of sin, and will not get what we deserve. Because of this hope, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Rom 5 colon 5. God knew that love is the greatest motivator of all time. God gave the body of Christ all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. F 1 colon 3. Our gratitude and our love for him and his love for us constraineth us to serve him out of love. We love him and others out of a grateful heart for what the Father and Christ have done for us. In this dispensation we are not under the law, but under grace, Rom. 6.14 Israel on the other hand, had put themselves under the law contract with God when they promised to keep his commandments, X 19.8 24 colon 7, and the law demands obedience out of fear, not love, Exodus 20 verse 20. 10 But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, 
for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. God has revealed his mystery to us now, it is. No longer hidden, Rom 16 25, 26. It is too late for Satan, he has already lost both heaven and earth, even though Christ has not taken possession of them yet. 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Here is a parallel man's spirit in him knows what is in man, likewise, only God's spirit knows what is in God. 12. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Spirit when it refers to God was not always capitalized by the King James translators. God freely gives us his spirit so we can be spiritual men and understand his plan of salvation and that we will live in heaven by faith. 13 Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. God's truth passes from the mind of God to his people through his word. God's spiritual words are to be compared in one place with related words found in another place to gain the most profit out of them, cross-referenced. 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The Bible is a closed book to anyone who is not saved. His spirit is needed to understand it, Job 32 verse 8 because it is spiritually discerned. 15. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. A saved person can judge or examine what God says, and all things. God alone judges the believer, and no one judges God, for colon 3-5. 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ now. Adam in Eden was created in God's image and thought like him. So, when he named the animals that is exactly what God would have named them. How do we have the mind of Christ? By reading and studying his word. No one can tell God what to do. God wants us to think like him and is conforming us to Christ. Rom 829 12:1 2 Philosophy 2:5 Chapter 3 Rewards in Heaven for Christian Service 3 1 8 Carnal and Worldly versus Spiritual Growth and Maturity 3 9 23 Rewards for Being Laborers Together with God We are going through Paul's epistles, which are God's curriculum for our edification, and our textbook is the King James Bible. Paul describes three kinds of people 1. The Natural, 2.14 those without the Spirit. 2. The carnal, 3 colon 1 dash 3, those in the Spirit, that walk in the flesh. 3. The spiritual, 2 15, 16, those in the Spirit, that also walk in the Spirit. Paul calls the Corinthians carnal babes in Christ, 3 colon 1, because they are spiritually immature. The way that their immaturity was revealed is that they are unable to judge, 6 1 5, and knowledge puffed them up, 8 1. But a spiritual person is able to judge, 5 3, and considers Christ and others before themselves, 8 13. When making decisions, we can ask ourselves, is it expedient, or will it bring me into bondage, 6 12? Will it stumble others, 8 9? or edify them, 10.23? Does it glorify God, 10.31? In chapter 9, Paul explains how he denied himself. The Corinthian church had many problems. One was that they did not realize that they were saved by faith and should also live by faith. After receiving Christ's righteousness by imputation, we need to learn to live by the studying Paul's doctrine. They did not understand their sanctification process, that they were dead to sin, but alive unto God and should walk in newness of Christ's life working in them and through them. They were to think like Christ, live like Christ, and spend their time serving Christ. 1. Paul gently, but firmly, 
corrects the Corinthians for being carnal and fighting like immature children. The carnal state, behaving like worldly unbelievers, prevents spiritual growth, sanctification. Two, then he tells them how the church should look upon him and his work, Colossians 1 verses 23 to 29, and what a minister is and does. Apollos and Paul are both just ministers, what Christ has done is what is important. Ministers are on the same level even if one plants the seed of God's words to save souls and another waters the seed to help it grow spiritually. God gives the increase. Exactly how the Spirit of God saves a soul is not fully understood. But He uses the Word of God. Ministers share the gospel and edify, build up, the church, the body of Christ. 3. God wants us to have some fruit at the judgment seat of Christ. 4. We will also look into what 3.17 means by if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Paul has to correct the focus and thinking of the spiritually immature believers at Corinth. There was confusion in the Corinthian church. They were focusing on men and not God. They were focusing too much on themselves and the gifts they had temporarily received. The gifts were not going to last. If all their emphasis was on the gifts, these believers would be at a loss when the gifts ceased. They needed to build their faith on the sure foundation of Christ according to the revelation of the mystery given to Paul. Their faith needed to rest and rely exclusively on Christ's cross work. Furthermore, Paul did not want the Corinthians to waste their time on earth but to serve God. We all have to be careful not to fall into legalism and religion when serving God but to do so out of love for Him and others. We serve Him because we want to, not because we have to. There is so much joy in being part of what God is doing today. We can accelerate our learning by listening to knowledgeable, Bible-believing preachers and teachers that rightly divide the word of truth and by doing our own daily reading and studying of God's word. We can learn from videos and books. I recommend Richard Jordan's Through the Bible in 7 Hours on YouTube, The Dictionary of the Gospel by Tom Brescia, Things That Differ by C. Art Estam, and Satan and His Plan of Evil by Keith R. Blades at EnjoyThebeable.com. Also, Through the Book of Books by Lori Verstigen, Great for Handouts, and God's Secret in Romans, a concise commentary both by Marianne Manley. We are already complete in Christ, Colossians 2 verse 10, so we cannot be more complete, and we already have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, f. 1 colon 3, still we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them, Ephesians 2 verse 10. Serving God is our reasonable service, Rom. 12 colon 1, we can serve God now and in heaven. At the judgment seat of Christ, believers will be judged on what they have done while in this body and given rewards and jobs based on if what we did was good or bad, to core. 5.10. This judgment seat occurs after the rapture. The rapture of the church was not revealed until Jesus revealed it to Paul. The rapture is exclusively found in Paul's epistles. The judgment seat of Christ is only for members of the body of Christ who have been saved between Christ's two appearings. Christ appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus, and very soon he will appear in the clouds as we meet him in the air. Christ will personally escort us through enemy territory, the dark unclean second heaven to his judgment seat. Paul is the master builder who laid the foundation of the body of Christ. But Paul's foundation was built on the foundation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625, all ministers, servants, in this dispensation are to build on this foundation. Paul warns, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon, 310. Paul is the main apostle for the body of Christ, but there are secondary apostles who also helped him in his ministry, Acts 14 verse 14, 1 Thess. 2 16. The apostles and prophets in Paul's day reiterated and confirmed the revelation that was already given to Paul and also determined what was scripture as they copied all 66 books of the Bible for mankind's benefit. The church of the living God was the pillar and ground for the truth, 1 Tim 3.15, 
God used men like these to perfectly preserve his holy word. We are to understand the rest of the Bible in the light of the truth that Paul gave us, 2 Tim 2 colon 7. We build on Paul's foundation. We are to make sure that we have something of value or lasting quality that will stand the test of fire like gold, silver, and precious stones at the judgment seat of Christ. Will you have anything of value at the judgment seat of Christ? Believers will be rewarded based on service done in this life. 2 Cor 5.10 Which are done according to God's will by His Spirit working through us. Rom 6 colon 1 dash 11 8 colon 1 2 12 colon 1 2 What is God's will for today? Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? 1 Timothy 2 verse 4 There are often many years between salvation and coming to the knowledge of the truth. In my case, it was 25 years. First, God wants the unsaved saved and will use saved human instruments to bring the gospel to the lost. God uses his word to save sinners. Those who help others to be brought to saving faith will have something of value like gold, silver, or precious stones at the judgment seat of Christ. The fruit of the Spirit is also of value. God wants everyone to be saved. Both Jews and Gentiles are saved by the same gospel today, Paul's 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. Second, God wants the unity of the faith. Grace believers are to help the weaker brothers and sisters to come to Pauline dispensational truth. These believers will have something of quality and value. Believers will receive rewards for being laborers together with God. Our motivation should be to love God and others. However, believers who teach worldly or false doctrine or share the wrong gospel that can't save anybody today, such as John 3 verse 16, will not have any reward. Their wood, hay, and stubble will be burned off, but they themselves will be saved as by fire. But no one who adds to what Christ has done will be saved, Romans 4 verse 5. For example, someone who does not know that Christ has two ministries, one for Israel in Matthew to John, and one to the body of Christ through Paul, will not have a reward. It is essential to know that the body of Christ began in Acts 9 with Paul's salvation on the road to Damascus, and not in Acts 2 with the coming of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2 is the continuation of an already established Messianic church. The work we do here on earth that lasts will determine what our jobs will be in the heavenly places. We do not need to go to a foreign country to save souls because there are enough unsaved in our own family, neighborhood, and city. The wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. We are not to glory in men, but in God who has given us all things in Christ. 3 colon 1 Two the Corinthians were worldly or carnal, and the flesh acting like unbelievers. They were baby Christians who were only able to comprehend the simplest truths milk. Paul was not able to tell them deep spiritual truths. Hebrews 5 verses 11 to 14. 3 colon 3, for they were envying each other and competing instead of working in unity. The purpose of the church is to edify, or build up, one another in love. We are a team. In the past, when the church was in its infancy, we needed apostles, but not anymore since Paul completed the Bible. F. 4 colon 11 16, Colossians 1 verses 23 to 25, 2 colon 2, 3. Some said, I follow Paul, while others said, We follow Apollos when they should be one church, one body in Christ. They should follow the Christ that Paul preached, not men. Read Acts 18 verses 18 to 28 to learn more about Apollos and Paul. 3 colon 5, 6 Paul says we are both just ministers by which you believed even as the Lord gives the increase. How the Spirit conforms our will with God's is not fully understood. See Acts 16 verse 14. We are not to focus on men. Paul planted or founded the church in Corinth, then Apollos, who was mighty in the scriptures, came and watered or helped them in their spiritual growth. 3 colon 7, 8 The person God uses are nothing because it is God's power, by His Spirit, that makes a person willing to believe God. This is a miracle that only God understands how it works.
It has to do with conforming our will to His, by faith. The Spirit's role in using God's words so the unbeliever is willing to put his faith on Christ is not fully understood, Colossians 2 verse 12. Paul was saying Apollos and I are only ministers, what Christ has done is what really matters. We should not elevate ministers, and neither should we disrespect them. The messenger is nothing, God is everything. Every person who labors in what God is doing, 1 Tim 2 colon 4, will receive a reward according to what he has done. This reward is probably a job, that is his position in heaven. 3 colon 9 dash 11, we are working together with what God is doing as his messengers. As part of the body of Christ, the Corinthians are God's farmers and his building or temple. Many farmers are needed to prepare the soil, plant, water, pull weeds, cultivate, harvest. Each receives wages and shares in the harvest. The goal is for the church to be at its spiritual best. God graciously gave Paul the ministry of laying the foundation for the body of Christ. Then Apollos came along and built on what Paul had begun. But everyone should be careful how they build on Paul's foundation. The foundation that Paul builds on is Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, or Christ's ministry from heaven which is distinct from his earthly ministry to Israel. 3.12 The gold is wisdom, the silver is understanding, and the precious stones are knowledge of what God is doing at present 1 Tim. 2 colon 4 All three words are found in Proverbs 2 verses 1 to 5, My son, if thou wilt receive my words, what God says, and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou creest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. These things last. PROV 3 colon 13 dash 15 16 16 2015 while wood hay and stubble the wisdom of men the world and false doctrine will burn up 3 colon 13 dash 15 there will be rewards in heaven for faithful service built on the right foundation at the judgment seat of Christ there will be rewards for service done in our bodies while on earth Christ will try our work as by fire to see if it is good or bad. 2 Cor. 5.10 The fire of his word, Romans to fill him into the body of Christ, and eyes will purify us by burning away any impurities. Is not my word like as a fire? Jeremiah 23 verse 29 Christ has eyes like unto a flame of fire. Revelation 2 verse 18 Fire takes away and cleanses anything that is not pure. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Proverbs 25 verse 4 If a person's work is burnt up, he will have loss of reward, but still get into heaven. In a sense, our lives are like a race to see how much labor we can do with our Father God while on earth. As ambassadors, we are sharing the gospel with the lost and those who think they are saved but have not trusted in Christ's work alone but added to their salvation. We are also helping the weaker brother, Rom, 14, who mixes Peter and Paul, Israel's prophetic program with the mystery, to come to Pauline dispensationalism. We are so blessed to have come to the knowledge of this truth. We want as many as possible to be saved and join us in this knowledge before the rapture. God wants us to do our best to have something of value at the judgment seat of Christ, 1 Cor. 9 colon 24 dash 27, 2 Tim, 4 colon 7, 8. If any man's work for service done on earth, 2 Cor, 5 10, does not burn up, he will receive a reward. 3 16 Paul reminds the Corinthian church that they are members of one another as a group, a holy temple for God to live in, f. 2 colon 20 dash 22. Notice the ye refers to the plural you meaning a group, not an individual. The King James Bible makes this distinction while modern Bibles do not. The church, the body of Christ, is a temple for God to live in. This is a corporate body, while in one cor. 
6.19 Paul speaks of the temple being the physical body of the individual. 3.17 Paul warns those who defile the temple of God by speaking against the body of Christ. In Psalm 79 verse 1, unbelievers have come into Jerusalem's holy temple. God will destroy false teachers who attempt to defile the body of Christ from its pure faith. Colossians 2 verses 4 and 8, 18. Paul warned about wolves from without and men from within who would draw disciples after themselves and not Christ. Acts 20 verses 29 and 30. God will bring them to ruin. Gal 5 10. But in 2 Corinthians 11 verses 3 and 4, 13, 14, 22, Paul said some Hebrews had come in to defile the church. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, Christ's earthly ministry, not heavenly, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, legalism, not grace, which ye have not received, or another gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of grace, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4 3.18 a.m. Fool is one who considers himself wise. If any man has the world's wisdom and thinks he is wise, he is deceiving himself. We should be willing to be a fool for Christ like Paul because then we will be wise. The wise of the world think that the cross is foolishness, 123, while God calls their wisdom foolishness, 319. 319, 20 Job 5 verse 13, PSA, 94 colon 1, 2, 11. Satan thought he was wise and that no secret could be hid from him. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that they can hide from thee. Ezekiel 28 verse 3. Satan thought that if God's people, the Jews, crucified their Messiah that God would hate them and that he would gain the earth. But God caught Satan in his own craftiness and ransomed Jacob from him by keeping a secret. Je. 31 colon 11. God had a glory plan to glorify his son in heaven and earth that he never mentioned until Paul, f. 1 colon 9-12. 3 colon 21-23 Peter's ministry was to the circumcision. Some of the little flock believers had realized that God was now working through Paul and were helping him, such as Barnabas, Silas, and Luke. We will inherit with Christ all things. The wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. We are not to glory in men, but glory in God who has given us all things in Christ. The definitions of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge from Noah Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Wisdom. The right use or exercise of knowledge, the best means to accomplish something praiseworthy. This is wisdom in act, effect, or practice discerning or judging what is most just, prudent, proper, and useful. Understanding, the faculty of the human mind by which it apprehends the real state of things presented to it, or by which it receives or comprehends the ideas which others express and intend to communicate. There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him understanding. Job 32 verse 8. The living word, Jesus, gives us spiritual understanding of his living word, 1 Cor. 2.13. Knowledge. A clear and certain perception of that which exists, or of truth and fact, the perception of the connection and agreement, or disagreement and repugnancy of our ideas. Learning, illumination of mind, exact comprehension. We can have no knowledge of that which does not exist. God has a perfect knowledge of all his works. Human knowledge is very limited and is mostly gained by observation and experience. In other words, wisdom is the proper application of knowledge and understanding, which involves timing, prudence, avoiding evil, discretion, and judgment. God alone is all wise. 3 colon 1 and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. The Corinthians were worldly or carnal, in the flesh, acting like unbelievers. Two I have fed you with milk, and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. 
They were baby Christians who were only able to comprehend the simplest truth's milk. Paul was not able to tell them deep spiritual truths. Hebrews 5 verses 11 to 14. 3 For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, and strife, and divisions, are ye not carnal, and walk as men? They were envying each other and competing instead of working in unity. The purpose of the church is to edify or build up one another in love. We are a team. In the past when the church was in its infancy, we needed apostles, but not anymore since Paul completed the Bible. F. 4 colon 11-16, Colossians 1 verses 23 to 25, 2 colon 2, 3. 4 for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Some said I follow Paul, while others said we follow Apollos, when they should be one church, one body in Christ. They should follow the Christ that Paul preached, not men. Read Acts 18 verses 18 to 28 to learn more about Apollos and Paul. 5 Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? Paul says we are both just ministers by which you believed even as the Lord gives the increase. How the Spirit conforms our will with God's is not fully understood. See Acts 16 verse 14. We are not to focus on men. 6 I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Paul planted or founded the church in Corinth, then Apollos, who was mighty in the scriptures, came and watered or helped them in their spiritual growth. 7 So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. The person God uses are nothing because it is God's power, by his spirit, that makes a person willing to believe God. This is a miracle that only God understands how it works. It has to do with conforming our will to His, by faith. The Spirit's role in using God's words so the unbeliever is willing to put his faith on Christ is not fully understood, Colossians 2 verse 12. Paul was saying Apollos, and I are only ministers, what Christ has done is what really matters. We should not elevate ministers, and neither should we disrespect them. 8 Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Paul and Apollos are one on the same level as ministers. Every person who labors in what God is doing, 1 Tim, 2 colon 4, will receive a reward according to what he has done. This reward is probably a job, that is his position in heaven. 9 For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. We are working together with what God is doing as his messengers. As part of the body of Christ, the Corinthians are God's farmers, and his building, or temple. Many farmers are needed to prepare the soil, plant, water, pull weeds, cultivate, harvest. Each receives wages and shares in the harvest. The goal is for the church to be at its spiritual best. 10 According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. God graciously gave Paul the position of master builder and the ministry of laying the foundation for the body of Christ. Then Apollos came along and built on what Paul had begun. But everyone should be careful how they build on Paul's foundation. 11 For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The foundation that Paul builds on is Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, or Christ's ministry from heaven which is distinct from his earthly. Ministry to Israel 12 Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, the gold is wisdom, the silver is understanding, and the precious stones are knowledge of what God is doing at present 1 Tim 2 colon 4. 
All three words are found in Proverbs 2 verses 1 to 5, My son, if thou wilt receive my words, what God says, and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou creest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. These things last. PROV 3 colon 13 dash 15 16 16 2015 while wood hay and stubble the wisdom of men the world and false doctrine will burn up 13 every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is there will be rewards in heaven for faithful service built on the right foundation at the judgment seat of Christ, there will be rewards for service done in this life on earth. Christ will try our work as by fire to see if it is good or bad. 2 Cor. 5.10 The fire of his word, Romans to Philemon, and eyes will purify us by burning away any impurities. Is not my word like as a fire? Ja. 23.29 Christ has eyes like unto a flame of fire, Revelation 2 verse 18. Fire takes away and cleanses anything that is not pure. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer, PROV. 25 colon 4. In a sense, our lives are like a race to see how much labor we can do with His Spirit working in us while on earth. Knowing that His will is to have all men saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4. As ambassadors, we are sharing the gospel with the lost and those who think they are saved but have not trusted in Christ's work alone but added to their salvation, Rom. For colon 5. We are also helping the weaker brother, Rom. 14. Who mixes Peter and Paul, Israel's prophetic program with the mystery, to come to Pauline dispensationalism. We are so blessed to have come to the knowledge of this truth. We want as many as possible to be saved and join us in this knowledge before the rapture. God wants us to do our best to have something of value at the judgment seat of Christ. 1 Cor. 9 colon 24 dash 27, 2 Tim. 4 colon 7, 8. Paul also says that the Philippians and Thessalonian believers are his crown. Phil 4 colon 1, 1 Thess. 2 19. 14. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work for service done on earth, 2 Cor. 5.10. Does not burn up, he will receive a reward. 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. If a person's work is burnt up, he will have loss of reward, but still get into heaven. 16. Know ye not, that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Paul reminds the Corinthian church that they are members of one another as a group, a holy temple for God to live in, f. 2 20-22. Notice the ye refers to the plural you meaning a group, not an individual. The King James Bible makes this distinction while modern Bibles do not. The church, The body of Christ is a temple for God to live in. This is a corporate body, while in one core. 619 Paul speaks of the temple being the physical body of the individual. 17 If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Paul warns those who defile the temple of God by speaking against the body of Christ. In Psalm 79 verse 1, unbelievers have come into Jerusalem's holy temple. God will destroy false teachers who attempt to defile the body of Christ from its pure faith. Colossians 2 verses 4 and 8, 18. Paul warned about wolves from without and men from within who would draw disciples after themselves and not Christ. Acts 20 verses 29 and 30. God will bring them to ruin. Gal 5 10. But in 2 Cor. 11 colon 3, 4, 13, 14, 22, Paul said some Hebrews had come in to defile the church. 
For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, Christ's earthly ministry, not heavenly, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, legalism, not grace, which ye have not received, or another gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of grace, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. 2 COR 11 colon 4 dot 18 Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. A fool is one who considers himself wise. If any man has the world's wisdom and thinks he is wise, he is deceiving himself. We should be willing to be a fool for Christ like Paul because then we will be wise. The wise of the world think that the cross is foolishness. 123. While God calls their wisdom foolishness, 319. Dot. 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Job 5 verse 13, Psalms 94 verses 1 and 2, 11. Satan thought he was wise and that no secret could be hid from him. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that they can hide from thee, Ezek. 28 colon 3, Satan thought that if God's people, the Jews, crucified their Messiah that God would hate them and that he would gain the earth. But God caught Satan in his own craftiness and ransomed Jacob from him by keeping a secret, Je. 31 colon 11, God had a glory plan to glorify his son in heaven and earth that he never mentioned until Paul, F. 1 colon 9 dash 12. 20 and again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. God knows that man's wisdom is empty. 21 therefore let no man glory in men. For all things are yours. 22 whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things. Present, or things to come, all are yours. Peter's ministry was to the circumcision. Some of the little flock believers had realized that God was now working through Paul and were helping him, such as Barnabas, Silas, and Luke. We will inherit with Christ all things. 23 And ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. The wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. We are not to glory in men, but glory in God who has given us all things in Christ. The following verses in Acts 18 help us to understand more about Apollos, Acts 18 verse 23 and after he, Paul, had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. Paul went on his third apostolic journey. 24 and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Meanwhile, Apollos comes to Ephesus. 25. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the Spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them, and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. This couple privately caught Apollos up with the Lord Jesus earthly through the twelve and his heavenly ministry through Paul. 27 And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, so the couple told him about the churches there and gave him a letter of recommendation. 28 For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, shewing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Apollos publicly convinced many of the Jews in Corinth from scripture that Jesus was the Christ so they could be saved and join the body of Christ. What is Satan's main policy of evil at this time? Satan's current policy of evil is for Christendom to follow Peter instead of Paul, or to mix Peter and Paul. Plus, the printing of modern counterfeit Bibles. Although Satan is a defeated enemy, he is still doing his best to cause division among believers, foil God's plan, and conceal Paul's distinctive apostleship and ministry to the body of Christ. This is the end of part one.